Bodo, Nagada, and Yavaya Nejalagi. So, if we could have everyone start making their way to their seats, we will get started in just a few moments. OCO Nagata. Let's do it again. OCO Nagata. All right. CO, and welcome to the 70th annual Cherokee National Holiday, State of the Nation. I'm Cherokee Nation Chief of Staff Corey Bunch, and it's a privilege to serve as your MC today. What a beautiful morning. What owe to my friend, Cherokee National Treasure, Tommy Wildcat, for getting us started with traditional flute music. The Cherokee National Holiday commemorates the signing of the Cherokee Nation Constitution in 1839. Today we gather as friends and as family to celebrate our sovereignty, our language, our history, and our culture. The 70th annual Cherokee National Holiday theme is Forging a Legacy. This year, our administration is focused on honoring our culture and Cherokee values in a way that sets the path for future generations. Today, we gather to celebrate and honor where we have been and to also look forward to where we are headed as a sovereign nation. At this time, if you're able, please stand and remain standing for the posting of colors, singing of the national anthem, and the blessing. Color guard, please post the colors. Thank you. Now please welcome the Cherokee National Youth Choir as they lead us in the national anthem.
Thank you. Can we give uh, the Cherokee National Youth Choir another round of applause, please? It is now my pleasure to welcome Deaconess Mary Lee Hildebrand of the Ballard Bible Church to offer the blessing. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this most beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us throughout this year. And Lord, I pray for our troop. Lord, I pray that you would just touch his body and heal it, that he may go on with his activities. Lord, I pray for our vice chief, Brian. Lord, I pray that you would just guide his path every day. Lord, I thank you for the Cherokee Nation, Lord, as we go into another, another year. Lord, just continue blessing the people, Lord. And, and bless the counselors as they go about the business every, every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, and we thank you for your mercy. But most of all, we thank you for salvation. And I'm just going to ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Deaconess Hildebrand. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming from Delaware County, District 9, the Speaker of the Council of the Cherokee Nation, Mike Shambaugh, to provide a welcome on behalf of the Council. Good morning and welcome home, Cherokee. I'm so grateful to gather together in person after a two-year hiatus due to COVID-19. I am Mike Shambaugh and am the Speaker of the Council and represent District 9 of our 14 county reservation. I am honored to represent the legislative body of the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee National Holiday allows us to take stock of our accomplishments. The things we do day in and day out on the Tribal Council give voice to the Cherokee people. Over the past two years, we have approved record-setting budgets and are on track to do the same for the upcoming fiscal year. Additionally, we are working diligently with Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr. and Deputy Principal Chief Brian Warner on issues of historic importance, such as the McGirt decision, the American Rescue Plan Act, as well as pandemic issues that seem to shift daily. I know I speak for the other 16 counselors when I say we are proud to serve as your representative. We strive to make our government stronger, better, and more responsive to our people's needs. This past year, our budget passage included raising the minimum wage for tribal employees to $12 per hour, and we are on our way to raising it to $15 in the near future. <laughs> Just as important, this gathering serves as a critical reminder of our sovereignty as a tribal government. Our sovereignty has always been and remains our most precious and treasured possession. I felt it important to get feedback from some of my fellow counselors on what they thought was important legislation which has had an immediate positive effect for our Cherokee citizens. Preserving our language and culture has been a priority for this council. The Durban Feeling Language Center is a place where elder speakers can reside and interact with each other, as well as Cherokee-speaking students. We also voted for the building of a new Cherokee Heritage Center where precious historical documents, artifacts, and artwork can safely be stored. We have allocated millions of dollars toward housing issues for our citizens. There has been special emphasis on serving our elders, veterans, and the disabled. The Mankiller Soap Water Act will bring resources to communities which are in dire need of improved water systems. The council also voted to fund our health care systems. From new hospitals to new clinics, this council has made the effort to ensure all of our citizens have access to the best health care possible. Additionally, the council voted to allocate more funding than ever before to fund new programs for at-large citizens at a higher rate than ever before. I believe I speak for all of my fellow counselors when I say we believe it is crucial to demonstrate support for all Cherokees. Yeah. 
there's so many programs that your tribal council has been an integral part of, and it's impossible for me to highlight them all. Personally, it was an honor to watch my fellow councilors to go out into their communities and distribute food during a time when it was greatly needed. I was also extremely proud that the council nearly unanimously voted to give each Cherokee citizen $2,000 during a time when families were devastated by the COVID pandemic. <laughs> Folks, that was an immediate game changer for so many. As I've said, these are just a few things that make me proud to be a part of our tribal council. I want to thank Principal Chief Chuck Koskin Jr., Deputy Principal Chief Brian Warner, as well as my fellow counselors for making so many good things happen for so many of our citizens. <laughs> Unfortunately, our sovereignty has been attacked numerous times by outside forces, and sadly, sometimes from within. I can promise you that this council, as well as our chief and deputy chief, will continue to fight for what is so precious to us all, our people and our sovereignty. In closing, the past has already been written. Our past and its challenges have defined us. Our past has strengthened us as a people and united us as a sovereign nation. No one can predict what the future may hold. Our future is ours to write. Along with our administration, we continue to move forward. We will continue to serve our great nation and all the people within it. On behalf of the Tribal Council, we are honored you're here to celebrate our accomplishments and bright future with us. May the Creator bless you all and continue to bless the Cherokee Nation. Wadon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a friend to us all. Among his many titles, he would tell you that his most proud ones are things that uh, include being a former counselor for District 6, T-ball and baseball coach for any team that the Warner boys are playing on, and not the least of these titles is the Deputy Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. Please join me in welcoming our Deputy Principal Chief, Brian Warner. Let's give the Creator another round of applause for bringing us all together. Well, I say CO. I, I am Brian Warner, and it is my honor to welcome you to the 70th Annual Cherokee National Holiday State of the Nation Address, where family is one of the core values that influences every decision we make at the Cherokee Nation, community, culture, and family, these are the tenets that define us as Cherokees. With those thoughts in mind, I want to thank my family, my wife Mako, and my three boys for their support and love and the other family that I have in the audience. The well-being of my family and yours guides my heart each and every day. It dictates my every action as your Deputy Principal Chief. I want to recognize the many Cherokee veterans who are here today watching this event stream online. If you are a veteran or you currently serve, would you please stand or wave so we can acknowledge you for defending our freedoms and our way of life. Wadal <laughs> to you all, all of you brave men and women. Your commitment to this great country makes all of us safer and more secure. It is always important for us as Cherokees to pay our respects to those who have sacrificed for our nation, and we will always continue to do that. In our Cherokee culture, the eagle represents honor, truth, purity, loyalty, and leadership. 
Eagle feathers represent those honorable qualities, and it is why our Eagle staff here is a part of our important gathering, why it is cared for and is carried by our color guard. Ladies and gentlemen, the words honor, bravery, and leadership define one of those special honorees. Earlier today, you watched the parade come down where Mr. Dwight Birdwell, a Cherokee from Adair County, and a former Chief Justice of the Cherokee Nation's highest court. The President of the United States recently bestowed the Congressional Medal of Honor to him for his many heroic deeds during the Vietnam War. Mr. Birdwell is a true Cherokee patriot, and we all admire his valor and his service to the country as well as the Cherokee Nation government. So we say wadon to Mr. Birdwell and his entire family. So let's give him a round of applause, please. And what a man he is, uh, stated best from my good friend, and our former deputy and our current secretary of Veterans Affairs, he's a hero's hero. And it doesn't get any bigger than that, folks. I also want to honor our ancestors, those who have gone on before us, and those precious Cherokees we have lost in the past year, and those that are no longer with us since we gathered here. The chair and the rows to my right on the stage are there to observe their absence. So let us take a moment of silence to honor those who have passed on before us and to those who continue to fight for our lives. Amen. Every year, we continue to commemorate this day. We do it to honor and remember the signing of the Cherokee Nation Constitution in 1839. Signing that Constitution formalized our sovereign government again after the Trail of Tears at our forced removal. Our Cherokee National Holiday theme for 2022 is Forging a Legacy. That is why it's important to our ancestors in 1839 as they started building our government back, building our courts, building our schools, and it remains ever so important today. Defending the Constitution is a vow my friend, Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin, Jr., and I have taken to protect our sovereign rights. And And today we are forging a legacy for the future of the Cherokee Nation, one that is built by lifting up our people. In Proverbs 16, verse 9, in their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And this is so reminds me of the importance of talking about the legacy that the Creator brought to this earth. That legacy, it, and He instilled talent into you. And to, and to me and to everybody. And all we have to do is be diligent to dig into those talents because that legacy is laid out. And if you look at that first word, forging, that's something that's done together. And each of us today, together, our ancestors of the past, those that are yet to be formed in the womb that our Creator knows are a part of this vital process of forging the legacy. But it's also important to remember that the Creator brought that legacy to this earth. So amen to that. The Cherokee Nation government is responsive and attuned to the needs of our people at every single phase of life, from the beginning to the end, from creating more educational opportunities for our people to building a stronger public health system to ensuring that families have secure homes and safe water and that we are undertaking those things more than ever today. We are executing more programs and services than ever, building and investing locally, driving the economy across our region, and remaining an employer of choice, choice for so many citizens. This proves that the Cherokee Nation is who is raising the tide here in Northeast Oklahoma. But, but, we do not do it alone, folks. We have so many invaluable partners, from higher education to career tech campuses, to county commissioners to, and local municipal leaders, to our friends at the state legislature. And we also do it the most important thing, with an amazing dedicated group of employees. And I want to thank our staff and their commitment to the nation and to our citizens. So let's give them a round of applause. All in leadership know that we would not be what we are without our team behind us. 
and that makes us all proud to serve. That's what a responsible government does. It finds a way to best provide for its people. The COVID-19 pandemic had an impact on all of our lives, no doubt, but we have emerged after two long years with a clear vision of how to propel our tribe, our communities, and our families forward, how to forge a legacy, friends, and this is how we do so in a sustainable manner. In Psalms 112, verse 4, it says, even in darkness, light dawns for the upright and for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. My hope is that we live in the spirit of those words, that we live in peace with our families, our communities, and that we live in peace with the natural elements around us, the land, the water, the air, and most importantly, live in peace with ourselves. As we are taught in the Cherokee culture, we have seven sacred directions. And one of those is inward, the inner self, where you are today. We have to heal and nurture that in order to keep passing on hope for the next generation and the next seven generations. Our creator has blessed us with love and peace and it transcends all understanding and will guard your spirit and it will also guard your mind. To me, these are the values that are worth celebrating and pursuing together this Labor Day weekend. I have truly missed the in-person fellowship that only this annual homecoming can provide for us. To see one another break bread, share a laugh, celebrate our unique culture and life ways, and truly take stock of the triumphs of the Cherokee Nation. It truly fills my heart. And I am proud to stand side by side with my friend, Chief Hoskin, as we make the Cherokee Nation stronger and healthier than ever with all of those around us. So thanks be to God, folks, and Wado, and have a great Cherokee holiday. Well, though, Deputy Chief, uh, we are encouraged by your words, and ladies and gentlemen, and I'll tell you that you just can't find a better guy than our Deputy Chief, Mr. Brian Warner. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> we have a common word that we commonly use to uh, demonstrate our efforts to work together in Cherokee. Does anybody know what that is? Let's say it together. Gadugi. Yeah, well, that's the way we, we say it. Today we have the honor to share our holiday with many wonderful guests, community partners, fellow leaders, and friends that I'm going to recognize right now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, even though they can't be with us today while still recovering from COVID, please join me in recognizing the first family of the Cherokee Nation. Thank you very much. After a return to good health and a string of negative tests this week, Chief Hoskin unfortunately tested positive again this morning and out of an abundance of caution, uh, he's, he's uh, going to be with us I think uh, virtually here in just a minute, but uh, this appears to be a case of COVID rebound and yesterday after he was cleared under CDC guidelines and tested negative, uh, again he produced a a pre-recorded version of the State of the Nation address that we'll hear in just uh, a few moments. But uh, in the audience today is the first father, Chuck Hoskin, and many other family members. And let's welcome again Deputy Principal Chief Ryan Warner and his wife Mako, their boys Caden, Luke, and Clayton. Next, we have former Cherokee Nation Principal Chief and current Cherokee Nation Businesses Executive Chairman, Bill John Baker and his wife, Sherry. We also have former Principal Chief, former Deputy Principal Chief and current Secretary of Veterans Affairs, S. Joe Crittenden and his wife, Linda.
We also have the distinguished members of the Cherokee Nation Cabinet, Secretary of State, Tyna Glory Jordan, <laughs> the Treasurer of the Cherokee Nation, Janice Taylor, <laughs> Cherokee Nation Marshal Shannon Buell is with us, Our Secretary of Natural Resources, Chad Harsha. Uh, let's see, our Delegate to Congress, Kim Teehee. And we also, I should mention, uh, S. Joe Crittenden is on the cabinet as well as Secretary of Veterans Affairs. And I myself serve as the Chief of Staff. We also have our Attorney General, Sarah Hill. Where is she at? There she is. <laughs> Next, we will recognize the Council of the Cherokee Nation. Please hold your applause until all of the Council members have been introduced. Leading our Council, we have uh, District 9, Speaker Mike Shambaugh. Would you please stand? You can remain standing if you want, Speaker. It's up to you. Uh, we have from District 1, Councilor Rex Jordan, and again, we'll, we'll uh, applause for them at the end. Uh, District 2, Councilor Candessa Teehee. District 3, Councilor Wes Nofire. District 4, Councilor Mike Dobbins. District 5, Councilor E.O. Jr. Smith. District 6, Councilor Darrell Legg. District 7, Councilor Joshua Sam. District 8, Councilor Sean Crittenden. From District 10, Councilor Melvina Schott-Pouch. From District 11, Deputy Speaker of the Council, Victoria Vasquez. From District 12, Secretary of Council, Dora Smith-Patskowski. From District 13, Councilor Joe Deere. From District 14, Councilor Keith Austin. From District 15, Councilor Danny Callison. And we have two at-large counselors, Johnny Jack Kidwell and Julia Coates. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause. We'd also like to recognize any former Cherokee Nation Council members. If you're in the audience today, please stand. Would you please stand? We'll recognize everyone at once. We got several of them in the house today. Thank you, thank you, sir. We would now like to recognize our judicial branch of government with us today. Please, uh, again, hold your applause until all members of the Cherokee Nation Supreme Court and District Court have been introduced. Representing uh, the Supreme Court, Justice John C. Garrett, Justice Mark. Dobbins, Justice Shauna Baker, Justice Rex Earl Starr, please remain standing. Uh, we also have Chief Justice Lee Payton. Our uh, best wishes as he continues his health recovery. Uh, we have representing the District Court, Judge Luke Bartow, Judge Nathan Bernard, and Judge Amy Page. Let's give these folks a round of applause. The Cherokee Nation thanks you for your service. In 2021, Chief Hoskin also named two special envoys to his administration, including special envoy to the United States Department of the Treasury, Mrs. Trey Lena Scott. Trey Lena with us. And special envoy for international affairs and language preservation, Mr. Joe Bird. We also want to recognize the many members of the Cherokee Nation boards and commissions and our Cherokee Nation business board of directors. If you're representing one of these boards, please stand to be recognized. We are honored to have many of our other friends with us today. We have members of the Oklahoma State Senate and the Oklahoma House of Representatives. Would you please stand to be recognized? <laughs> the
Thank you. We uh, deeply appreciate also the Oklahoma State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Joy Hoffmeister, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all of our county and city elected officials who are great partners to the Cherokee Nation and they uh, have taken the time to join us today. Would you please stand to be recognized? City and county, thank you. As a tribe, we're also so proud to uh, uh, recognize our education achievements that we've made in the recent years, and I always want to acknowledge that uh, there are many important partners that we work together with in higher education. Uh, we're going to start right here at home with Northeastern State University and their president, Dr. Steve Turner, and his wife, Penny. Where are you guys at? Thank you, Dr. Turner, for all you do. If you're joining us from another institution of higher learning, either on the res uh, reservation or off the reservation, would you please stand? We've got several in the house today. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our Cherokee Nation Young Ambassadors. Would each little Cherokee Ambassador stand and be recognized? Got several of them right over here to my right. They did a fantastic job competing just a few days ago. All right, the Junior Miss Cherokee Leadership Competition promotes Leadership Among Cherokee Youth. This year's honoree is Macy Fields. Would you please stand? <laughs> We'd like to say a very special thank you to the uh, former Miss uh, Young Cherokee uh, Ambassador, Junior Cherokee Ambassador, Miss Leah Gardner, for your service. And now I'm proud to introduce Miss Cherokee 2022-2023, Lauren Fields. Congratulations, Lauren. And a very special thank you to Miss Shelby Turtle, our outgoing Miss Cherokee, for your outstanding service. Your nation is very grateful to the out outgoing ambassadors. We want to recognize our youth ambassadors who are joining us today from the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Please stand and be recognized. Now, would the 2022 Remember the Removal bike riders please stand to be recognized? And we also have members from the Cherokee Nation Tribal Youth Council. Please stand. Each year, the Cherokee Nation pays tribute to Cherokee citizens and organizations who exemplify Cherokee ways of life. This past Thursday, the honors of patriotism, statesmanship, community leadership, uh, both organizations and individuals, National Treasurers and the Samuel Wooster were awarded by Chief Hoskin and Deputy Chief Warner during a special dinner banquet. Uh, would all of these honorees please stand to be recognized? <laughs> Congratulations to those uh, honorees for sure. I'll tell you, Miss Winterford also celebrated her 100th birthday recently. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Cherokee Nation Businesses CEO, Mr. Chuck Garrett, to the podium.
Mauricio, friends and fellow Cherokees, it is my honor to be joining you all here today at our annual homecoming. I am Chuck Garrett, and I serve as the CEO at Cherokee Nation Businesses. The annual State of the Nation is our opportunity to reflect on the past and some of the remarkable and historic achievements, but also to look ahead to our bright future. The past two years have been a historic threat to the lives of Cherokee citizens, to our businesses, and our way of life. At a time when businesses were failing all across Oklahoma, Cherokee Nation businesses were able to ensure that not a single Cherokee employee missed a paycheck. <laughs> Cherokee Federal continued to fill their essential function to help protect our country while keeping our workforce safe. Cherokee Nation Entertainment and Cherokee Nation Industries led the nation by following safe workplace practices that allowed our facilities to reopen faster and stronger. At a time when the entire world is facing difficult economic times, Cherokee businesses are thriving. The leadership team of Chief Hoskin and Deputy Warner put in place, working closely with our employees, pulled us through the difficult times together as a company, as a community, and as a family. We know the investments made in our communities from Cherokee Nation drive the economy and protect the communities within our reservations. Cherokees benefit, but so do our friends and our neighbors. Along with Deputy Chief Brian, Hosk oh, excuse, Brian Warner, excuse me, Chief Hoskin has encouraged all Cherokees to do even more for our citizenry, to do more in our communities, including building community center infrastructure, so our people have places to gather, share a meal, and share our Cherokee culture and values, to do more to build stronger Cherokee families, including investments in physical and mental wellness that can positively impact so many Cherokee households to do more to advance our Cherokee culture, including our commitment to protect our natural resources, as well as the significant historic sites critical to our shared past. In my role as CEO, I've embraced these challenges and those presented by the COVID global health crisis. Working with Deputy Chief Warner, the Council of the Cherokee Nation, members of the cabinet, and our government and businesses workforce, we can achieve the goals set by Principal Chief Hoskin. I am so proud to introduce the man who is moving our sovereign nation forward into a better future for all. At this time, Chief Hoskin is going to join us by phone to deliver a special message before the State of the Nation address. OCO, my friends. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing I would rather do than to be with you today at the Cherokee National Holiday to deliver my State of the Nation address. But on behalf of the First Lady and our daughter, we know that first and foremost, we need to do what our ancestors have always done, which is to have each other's back and keep each other safe. I'm feeling fine. I'm on my way to getting back uh, to uh, in-person uh, gatherings, but I tested positive this morning. I tested out of an abundance of caution when I think about some of the precious folks that uh, I would be around today, whether it's our 100-year-old veteran in our audience who we love or any of the number of people that I would interact with, I could not in good conscience come today. And of course, I'm following Cherokee Nation public health guidelines. But I want all of you to know that serving as your chief, other than being a father and a husband and grandfather now, uh, is the greatest honor of my life. And I'm so proud of the Cherokee Nation. I would report to you today, and you will hear it in my recorded remarks, that the state of the Cherokee Nation is strong. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I know that that strength is not built on the past few years. It's built on decades. It's built on generations. It's really built from time immemorial. But the most important thing about today, and the most important message I wanted to share with you is that what's more significant than the state of our nation being strong today is that we keep it strong. 
And we can only keep it strong if we work together to the greatest extent possible to move this nation forward. Ladies and gentlemen, we have so much more work left to do, but I'm proud of how far we've come. So you'll see my pre-recorded video presentation in a moment. Uh, if I was there, rest assured, I would flash everyone the peace sign and tell you what do. But I look forward to seeing you again. Dona Dago Honey. Fellow Cherokees, this is the fourth time I have addressed you on the state of the Cherokee Nation. After years of facing a global pandemic, staring down opponents of tribal sovereignty, and seizing opportunities to make the lives of the Cherokee people better, I'm happy to report that the state of the Cherokee Nation in 2022 is strong. Our nation's strength comes from the people. Those of us who hold these elected offices must always remember that the office does not belong to us. The offices we briefly hold belong to the Cherokee people. When we measure our strength as a sovereign nation, we often speak of numbers. From our over $2 billion annual economic impact, to our workforce of over 11,000, to our 7,000 square mile Cherokee Nation reservation, to our population of more than 437,000 citizens. These are surely measures of our strength. But my fellow Cherokees, our strength derives from the people. Therefore, we must measure our strength by how well we are serving the people. This requires us to listen carefully. This calls upon us to undertake efforts to meet the most important needs, the greatest hopes, and the highest aspirations of the Cherokee people. The state of our nation remains strong because as Cherokee people, we listen to each other. We learn from one another and we have each other's back. Our administration, the deputy chief, and the council take this to heart. We've been doing our level best to deliver a government that's worthy of the people. The Cherokee people have asked us to protect tribal sovereignty. That's our most basic obligation. Not only did we help secure the historic win in the United States Supreme Court in the McGirt case, we've defended it in the courts, in the halls of Congress, and in public debate. Cherokee Nation remains the best friend the state of Oklahoma has ever had. As we build up the greatest criminal justice system in the country, both the state of Oklahoma and the Cherokee Nation will need to lean on that friendship. But my message to state leaders, which I announced from this stage in 2019, remains firm. The Cherokee Nation must be treated with respect. To those opponents of tribal sovereignty who proclaim that McGirt is the greatest threat to Oklahoma, that our sovereignty is a problem to be solved, let me be clear. Cherokee sovereignty is not a threat. Cherokee sovereignty is an opportunity for all of us. Cherokee sovereignty is not the problem. The threat that all of us face is that a few in power fail to use that power to make progress for everyone. Instead, they use power to divide. They sow seeds of fear. Their aim is to cripple tribal governments or even wipe tribal governments off the face of the earth. My fellow Cherokees, those leaders are hopelessly lost on the wrong side of history. They're more at home in 1822 than in 2022. Those leaders are the problem. But my fellow Cherokees, that is a problem that we aim to solve and we aim to solve it, be it at the ballot box or in the courts or in the halls of Congress. Expanding Cherokee Nation's criminal justice system weighs on the shoulders of every leader of this nation and will continue to do so for generations to come. We must get this right. The Cherokee people are counting on us. We must invest our dollars wisely to further expand our marshal service, our attorney general's office, and our victim services programs. That is why Deputy Chief Warner and I have sent to the council the largest criminal justice budget in Cherokee history. If that budget is approved, 
it means that in the last three years, we have increased the Marshall Service budget alone by 267% and increased its staffing capacity by over 240%. That is also why we are taking another historic step. This month, we are proposing to the Council the Cherokee Nation Violence Against Women Act. We must do more to put a blanket of protection around victims and survivors of domestic violence, women, children, and men. This law will help protect families and the most vulnerable citizens across our reservation. If we mean what we say about honoring elders, then we must also reach out to those elders who are facing danger or who are living in the shadows. That's why we will bring back our Elder Summit so we can hear directly from our elders. That's why we must take real action out of that summit, creating new laws and programs to protect elders from fraud and abuse. We will listen to our elders and we will start putting these new initiatives in place within one year from today. Now, speaking of elders, we have a guest in the audience, a special guest of the First Lady, 100-year-old World War II veteran, Winifred Freddie Dudley. Now, Freddie, we're bringing back the Veterans Warrior Flight to Washington, D.C. in November, and we are delighted that you'll be joining us on that flight. The Cherokee people want to lead healthy lives. In the last three years, we've invested $62 million into expanding and improving our rural health clinics. That means the Wilma Mankiller Clinic in Steelwell more than doubled in size. That means safety and comfort improvements at Redbird Smith in Salisaw and a backup generator for the dialysis center next door. That means expanding dental services in Oshaleta and bringing those services for the first time to no water. That means new CAT scan services in Vanita, Muskogee, and Tahlequah. One year ago, Deputy Chief Warren and I called for a new hospital and replacement of our oldest clinic. The Council of the Cherokee Nation took action. We are on a path in the next three years to replace the Salina Health Center with a brand new facility with triple the capacity and a wellness center. In that same time period, we will also replace W.W. W. Hastings Hospital with a brand new hospital with more than double the capacity and more services. These two investments alone total more than $450 million. More than that, all of these investments will help us become a healthier nation. Our deputy chief often reminds me that the best opportunity for us to get healthy is not at the health clinic, but in our day-to-day -day lives. And so, under the historic Public Health and Wellness Fund Act, we're investing millions of dollars into wellness programs and services. That includes our first new wellness center in Stillwell, a $12 million project on which we'll break ground by the end of this year. From our wellness space at the new Salina Health Center to community centers in Kenwood and Marble City, we will be bringing opportunities for wellness to communities in need. In the coming year, let's do all we can to spread those opportunities to lead healthier lives to Cherokees everywhere. As chief, my job is to listen to the people. For me, the most special of those voices is that of our First Lady. She challenged me early on in my term of office to do more to address the drug addiction crisis that's crippling too many of our people and destroying too many of our communities. And so, First Lady, I'm pleased to report that we will build a new drug treatment center by Cherokees for Cherokees, and we're making the opioid industry pay for every penny of it. The First Lady's challenge was a reflection of the concerns of each of us. Drug addiction and other mental health issues injure every Cherokee family. This nation needs healing. Our efforts to expand behavioral health programs will bring about that healing. For many, this can be the difference between hope and despair, or even life and death. In the final analysis, what matters is that we help each other achieve a holistic state of wellness, body, mind, and spirit. 
When Deputy Chief Warner and I took office, we also heard from the people that housing, particularly for our elders, is a high priority and that we should do more. We work with the Council on the Housing, Jobs, and Sustainable Communities Act to inject $30 million into repairing homes for elders and improving the community centers that serve them. Earlier this year, the Council extended the Housing, Jobs, and Sustainable Communities Act with a $120 million investment. We will continue our efforts to repair or replace homes for elders. We'll continue building and improving community centers but we are also focused on affordable housing for young Cherokee families. I'm proud to report that we will soon break ground on a 25 home housing addition right here in our capital city of Tahlequah. And when it comes to affordable housing, my fellow Cherokees, we are just getting started. Under the Housing, Jobs and Sustainable Communities Act, we will build hundreds of new homes across this reservation in the coming years. These homes will change people's lives, make communities stronger, and every penny the homeowners pay back will go to fund housing programs for the next generation. The Cherokee people ask that we work together to save our language and culture. And so Deputy Chief Warner and I proposed the Durban Feeling Language Act in 2019. That $16 million investment is enabling us to build a state-of-the-art Cherokee language campus, expanding the country's most innovative language revitalization efforts. This is the largest Cherokee language investment in Cherokee history, and for good reason. Our language is our culture. Our language is part of that unbroken chain that links us back to our creation. That chain will not be broken on our watch. We will send legislation to the council this year to do even more. We will further expand our most promising programs. Our new speaker services program will reach out to help our fluent speaking elders in need live lives of dignity. Our language outreach program will give Cherokee people living here at home and at large a chance to learn and help us save this language. Generations from now, our descendants will judge us not by the size of our casinos, the expanse of our health system, or the excellent things we do to address any number of challenges. They will judge us on whether we kept alive what it means to be Cherokee. Together, all of us are on a mission to make sure that chain remains unbroken, to make sure we save our language. When I think of our success, my mind goes to a five-year-old girl who greeted me at a community meeting earlier this year. She said, CO. I said, CO. She said, Tohiju. I knew I was over my head at that point. This little girl, Rihanna Lane, then talks circles around her chief in Cherokee. I could not have been more proud. She's a student in our Cherokee Language Immersion School in Tahlequah, which we're expanding into Adair County and beyond. I knew then, and I know now, that this mission to save our language is one which we cannot fail. We must not fail. And thanks to Rihanna and others in her generation, we will not fail. Our culture, of course, is rooted in our history and reflected in our art. That's why we will propose a $3 million Cherokee Artist Recovery Act. After some difficult years for our great artist, the Cherokee Artist Recovery Act will provide more opportunities for our artists to sell their art, teach their craft, and therefore perpetuate our beautiful culture and lifeways across the reservation and across the country. There's a hunger among Cherokees to learn our history and share it with the world. That's why we're bringing back the Cherokee History Course to communities here at home and at large. We need to raise a generation of Cherokees who know that they come from a proud people and that our tragedies are eclipsed by our triumphs. The Cherokee people also expect us to assert and honor every letter of our treaties with the United States. Holding the United States accountable to its treaty obligations is our exclusive and solemn responsibility. The historic Hunting and Fishing Compact of 2015 was a brilliant expression of our tribal sovereignty. 
but that compact was abandoned last year by Oklahoma's governor. So that is why this year we are asserting our treaty rights to hunt and fish within the Cherokee Nation Reservation for the first time since 1907. Our obligation to assert our treaty rights is also why I once again call on the Congress of the United States to keep America's promise to the Cherokee people. Seat Kim Teehee, our delegate to the House of Representatives. I'm calling on the House of Representatives to hold a committee hearing before the end of this month to decide whether America is a country that keeps its word. My message to the United States on behalf of the Cherokee people must be unmistakable. When it comes to asserting our treaty rights, the Cherokee Nation is just getting started. All of these efforts and so many more are rooted in the hopes, ideas, and expectations of the Cherokee people. Our job as leaders is to do our level best to put those hopes and ideas into action to meet those expectations. My fellow Cherokees, I'm not perfect. I fall short from time to time. But I promise you that I give you my best effort each day. I do my best to listen to the people. I do my best to keep our nation strong for this speck of time that I hold the office of principal chief. The state of our nation is strong, but what really matters is that we work together to keep it strong. And there's so many reasons to keep our nation strong. For those elders who need a helping hand in their twilight years, let us keep our nation strong. For our children who deserve an opportunity to succeed, to get an education, and to lead happy and productive lives, let us keep our nation strong. For our brothers and sisters who need a blanket of protection or a helping hand when times are tough, let us keep our nation strong. For our citizens who work together in that spirit of Gadugi to make their communities better places to live, let us get behind their efforts and let us keep our nation strong. For the men and women serving the Cherokee people each day as employees in our programs, our services, and our businesses, let us have their backs so that they can help keep our nation strong. For generations yet to come who are counting on us to preserve and pass down our beautiful language and culture, let us revitalize what it means to be Cherokee and let us keep our nation strong. For our ancestors who are always watching, my fellow Cherokees, let us protect and defend Cherokee sovereignty. Let us lead this nation with courage and let us keep this nation strong. Ladies and gentlemen, what an honor it is to serve under Chief Hoskin and Deputy Chief Warner. Would well, Chief, to, uh, for those words, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's probably watching online, so how about we give our chief, our principal chief, Chuck Hoskin Jr., some love. Cherokee Nation is stronger than ever under Chief Hoskins' leadership. I think you heard it. And uh, he's so great, he doesn't even care if a car alarm's going off. He'll just keep going. It's <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite Guy Soldier to the podium to provide our closing prayer. Praise the Lord. 
Man, I like that sermon you preach. <laughs> uh, I want to say a few words, okay? Uh, I really thank the, uh, the chief and Brian boys and the elderly people. And uh, I've noticed uh, Howard Patton's all, uh, he's working very hard too for the elderly people. And uh, back where I'm from, everything that's done for the elderly people, they really appreciate it. Appreciate it. And uh, just thank the Lord for you guys, okay? And just keep up the good work, all right? We'll be praying for you. Uh, let's pray. God's already said, all who can stand, may you stand. Skiana Elena, he hogi to the galare de he, a leo gi se lu ski to go ye chisa. Seven o lo si lori to the elite he, sawo to go yo ga da pisa tinia tamika. No lena sko to the ki ye trena do ni la stana ha, kana ge sana na. Galati you no ga he, Mrs. Swan Elena. No less good to go of you, Jesus, he'd know that the yah, she'd eat here, Talith Talith Talith, Gussie'd eat here to the yah. Oh, see, no, Jayla, Nagay says, Nigadu, oh, Sidoski, I can now we go to it. Halani here, Dante's girl, Jeto, hey, Swan Elena. Lord, again, we thank you, Lord, for this meeting that took place. Lord, we just pray that you just bless, Lord. And Lord, we pray and bless the, the, the chief and the vice chief and all their councilmen and everybody that has a part in it, Lord, that we're doing a good job, Lord. And Lord, we pray from here on in, Lord, that you just take care of them, watch over them and their families also, Lord. And I know there's going to be some times, Lord, they're going to hit rough times, Lord, and, and things that will try to hinder their doing good things for us churches. But Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'll just remove whatever the hindrance may be, Lord. And Lord, again, I thank you for a safe trip that you have given us to be here, far and near, Lord. And again, when everything is done and over with, Lord, just give us a safe journey back home, Lord. And, and Lord, we pray that you just bless our families, Lord, each and every family, Lord, that's represented here. And, and again, Lord, we just want to say we love you. And Lord, uh, we know that you care for us. And Lord, but most of all, we thank you for what you did for us many years ago when you was hanging up on that cross, Lord, the blood that was shed, Lord, from your body was to cleanse our sins away. And they took you off that cross, Lord, and buried you in a grave. But thank you, Jesus, for rising on a third day, Lord. That's where our salvation comes from, Lord. And again, thank you for this meeting that took place. Bless it in a mighty way, Lord. And be with the chief, Lord, and his family, Lord. And, and Lord, we just pray that you will just put your healing hands upon his body at this very moment, Lord. For we ask and pray in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well done, Mr. Soldier. Color guard, at this time, please retire the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, we want to say thank you for attending today. And on behalf of the Cherokee Nation, we wish you a very safe and blessed holiday. Now, please enjoy a song provided by the Cherokee Circle as we conclude uh, the event today. Thank you. Wadon. to do, Brian, does he just want to do one song? Does he want to do one song? Okay, we'll do one. Hey, if I could have your attention, we're going to close this program out at the request of the chief. We're going to do one Cherokee song just to close everything out and bless you on your way, okay? This is the Cherokee Circle here. It's got DJ McCarter, got Francis. I think this is Crystal Gale's cousin here, Jaleesi, Harmony. Jeannie. And this morning was such a beautiful morning, we were going to sing It Is a Beautiful Morning by the Rascals, but I think we better stay Cherokee on this one here. So if Charlie Shell will come to the front, he'll lead us a song and everybody go on their merry way. Let me make this announcement, please. At 2 o'clock at the old Sequoia High School gym, there's going to be an all Cherokee singing from 2 till 5. All Cherokee singing. At the old high school gym, 
Theater Stella, huh? Your high school gym at Sequoia. What though?